pastor told me I was preaching. God have a word for his people. Amen. Somehow the enemy is sensitive in the atmosphere. All right. But God wants to do something for his people. And so he, uh, he he begins to attack the messenger to keep the message from being delivered. But I know my God is greater. Amen. And greater is he who is in me than he was in this world. Yes. Failure and option is not a, I mean, failure and defeat is not an option for me. My body was, you know, the past couple days has just been really weak. And <coughs> my wife would tell you I've been overdosing on NyQuil and NyQuil. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing about me is I don't, I don't get sick often. Maybe get sick once a year, but when I do, it hits me hard. So, but I'm determined to do what it is that God has called me to do today. Because we all go through stuff. We all have something that we're dealing with. We all have issues in our lives that that makes us feel unworthy or unloved. Sometimes it just makes us feel like God is, is not even near us. And those can be some real rough times. You know, when, you, when you're going through something and the people that are supposed to be loving you unconditionally seems to be uncaring. You know, and then the friends that say they are stick by you and never leave you is nowhere to be found. And then the, the one who said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, seems to be so distant. We find ourselves in places of, of feeling defeated, of feeling like, what's the use? What's the point? God, I, I, I don't understand. I'm doing everything I believe that you are requiring of me to do. And yet, I feel like it's all for nothing. I had someone contact me earlier this weekend. And this individual was just, it, it started off just pray for me. I prayed. And they went on to say that I just feel like giving. Of course, I can, I can understand that. I can relate to that. Because there are those times in life when, when it just seems so hard. When it just seems so unbearable and it's just like, what's, what's the point? What's the use? We want to turn our back on God and we want to just say, you know what, this is too hard. It was easier for me when I was in the streets. I didn't have it this hard when I was in the streets, God, so why is it that? Here now, I've accepted you and I'm serving you and, and it feel like it's getting harder and harder. And we think like it's supposed to get easier when we accept Christ. He said that I'm your heavy load bearer. So God, why do it feel like I'm still carrying the load? Why do it feel like you're nowhere near? And so I began to encourage this person and, and to tell him, we don't always know why God allows certain things to take place in our life. We don't know. But your why has to be greater than your what. Why you're serving God has to be greater than what's attacking you. Why you're standing and walking in the will of God has to be greater than what you are up against. And I know it's easier said than done. Because when we in those moments when we just feel like throwing up our hands and giving up and saying the heck with it, God is still standing there. It's to increase our endurance, our perseverance. 
He's not allowing it to happen just to happen. He said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He didn't tell us they wouldn't form. He said, they will not prosper. Amen. The Bible says that God delights in every detail of our lives. He delights in every detail of your life. Even that part where it seems so hard and you seem so attacked. You feel like you're being persecuted, coming and persecuted, going. But our God said that if you share in my suffering, you shall also share in my glory. The Bible said that God sent his only son to die on the cross for us to pay a penalty that we so deserve. I refuse to believe that a God that will send his only son to die in my place, which is settled with me just living a life of pain and suffering. There has to be a reason to why God is allowing some of the things that take place in our lives. I don't, I don't know what that reason is for you. But I do know that God said to count it all joy for all things work for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Even those things that you don't even understand why you have to go through, I don't understand it either. But at the same time, I have to take God at his word literally. God, you said to count it all joy. I don't understand why you would allow me to go through something Come like on. this, Hollywood. but because Come you on. said to count it joy, I'm going to count it joy, but God, I need your strength right now. I need your help right now, God. I was in Milwaukee early. Um, Wednesday. Wednesday and Thursday. And um, I'm on my way home. And before I can even get on the expressway, I noticed my, my uh, engine is starting to heat up. Pull over to the gas station, check my, uh, my, uh, uh, I can't think of what you call it, sir, uh, what you call it, that was sir, that was sir, that was sir, that was that it spins on had ended up going bad, so it was spinning, but the belt wasn't spinning, so now, from where I was at to where I needed to be, which is home, was a little close to three hours. So in my head, man, I'm either gonna have to call a tow truck, get a hotel room, rent a car, all of this stuff, but in my head, I'm just like, no. No. God, why? <laughs> why? So I said a prayer. I said a prayer, God, I'm gonna need you to get me home. I don't want to call the tow truck. I don't know any mechanics. I don't know anything about up here. I'll get just to do some tile flooring. And I prayed. So I said, okay, if I can keep it from overheating till I get home, that'd be good. Went and got a gallon of antifreeze, a couple quarts of oil, and I got on my journey. And I was on my journey. A two hour ride, two and a half, close to three hour ride. It took nine hours to get home. Nine hours. I don't understand still right now to this day. I don't understand why it happened. I can't say, God, why did you allow this to happen to me? Here's what I do. I would drive my car maybe two to three to five miles to begin with. And I'll pull over and let it cool off for 15, 20 minutes. Get that for over 200 miles. But I took that time to spend time with God, to talk to God, to allow God to talk to me and to listen. Because sometimes we get so busy with our everyday hustle and bustle to it. 
we don't give ourselves enough time to get to know or to listen or to have a conversation with the, with the one we say we love. With the one we say, oh God, for you I live and for you I die. But that seems to only matter when we got our backs up against the wall. When we are hurting and we need him to show up on our behalf right then and there. Why did my car? I don't know. I don't know. But here's what I do know. We have a God that delights in every detail of our lives. I don't believe in God for a new truck. I don't know where it's coming from. But I believe I don't believe in God. I don't know what that thing is that you're dealing with. I don't know what your struggles are. I don't know what your concerns are. But God do. Why not give them and trust them in the hands of the one who can fix them? He had promised to that we won't have any problems. But what he did promise us is to be with us every step of the way, even when you feel like you're all by yourself. God cares. And he's right there. The problem is, it's with us. We don't remember our past victories. What made David so great when it came down to battling Goliath is he remembered his past victories. He remembered. He remembered the bear. He remembered. So when it came down to fighting David, he already knew who was on his side because it was his past victory that compelled him through this victory. Your past victories is what's going to compel you through this, whatever it is you're dealing with. I don't know what you're dealing with, but the common denominator is you have God on your side. And as long as you have God on your side, greater is he who is in you than he who is in this world. You can't get through what you're going through right now. Think about the last thing that you went through. And you thought that was the hardest thing. But God got you through it. And now here you're faced with something else. Whether it's in your finances, whether it's in your body, your family, whatever that thing is, it's not too big for God. Trust God. Get in his presence because the Bible says that God is seeking. He's going to and fro throughout the earth looking for someone to show his power through. Is it you? Is he looking for you? Because he's looking for someone. Don't allow your sin to cause you to hide like Adam and Eve did in the beginning. Don't, cause, don't let your flaws, whatever it is that you think is too big or you know, God won't forgive me or, or they won't understand. Don't let that be what causes you to hide. Because even still, God was looking for Adam. Adam, where are you? And he's looking. Where are you? Why are you hiding? Why are you not bringing me this problem? I told you I'd take care of it. You said you trust me. Why are you still trying to handle it yourself? It's not yours to handle. Let it go. Let it go. And let God help you through it. Pray for the strength of the Holy Spirit to give you the strength that you need. The Bible says to acknowledge God in all of our ways and he will direct our path. Have you acknowledged God? Have you asked God for direction for that thing that you're struggling with right now? Or are you trying to deal with it on your own? Is it in your will? Or are you in God's will? I can't tell you what that is, but you know. You know what that thing is. And you know if you're bringing it upon yourself, and you know if it's one of those things that you know what, I have absolutely nothing to do, but I'm gonna to continue to trust God through it, each and every step of the way. 
We have to take God at his word, literally. We pick and choose what we want to believe. We pick and choose what we want to follow. It don't work like that in the kingdom of God. It don't work like that with us. Those are things that we use when we was out in the world. And a lot of times our flesh will get us to compromise. And then we find our back up against the wall and then now we want to pray. He said to acknowledge me in all of your ways. Yes. And he will direct your path. Don't wait till your back is up against the wall. Stop praying now. <clears throat> Start asking, for, asking God for direction now. For peace now. For healing now. Yeah. And trust him. I trust God. I trust God in every area of my life. My wife will tell you, and it gets on my nerve. I know I do. But I've learned. I've learned to trust God with every single thing. Because as a man, we, we have this natural inkling to, to fix our own problems. We're problem solvers. We want to fix it. I think I figure it out. I'll I fix this. I do it. And then we, you know, we're too prideful to say, man, I really need some help right now. But you can only kick against the prick for so long until you stop kicking and saying, okay. Okay, God, here I am. So no matter what comes up in our, in our life, in our marriage, in our finances, no matter what it is, even with my God, I didn't even tell her until I was, <laughs> I was a, about four hours in, and she's like, how long you got? I said, two hours. She said, still two hours? <laughs> you said that two hours ago. <laughs> but I didn't want her to worry, and I knew she would, and I knew she was just going to keep on calling my phone or texting me and running my battery down. Then I had to say, baby, would you stop calling me? I'm trying to get home, man. <laughs> It's, 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 it's trusting God. I, I just want to encourage you guys to just trust God. Trust God with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding because you don't know how God is going to bring that thing through. You don't know how God is going to get you through. We mess up when we're trying to figure it out ourselves. And when we think it should go this way and then it don't go that way, and then we get all down and we get discouraged and we feel like, God, where are you? And God is, I'm right where you left me. So I want to encourage you to trust God. Whatever you're going through right now, it is not new to God. God already know how he's going to get you through it and get you out of it. You may not know it and you may not understand it. And the pain may be just that much to where this is God is. I don't know what else to do. All I know to do right now is to trust you. This is something I can't fix, God. But I trust you. Lord, you said to count it all joy. I can't count this joy, but I trust you. I need you more than anything else. Get in his presence. Pray. Spend time with God. Put your trust in, in God. Not in your job. Not in your doctor. Put it in God. And let God make a way out of no way. He sent Jesus. Jesus endured a penalty that he knew we couldn't do. So he said, Father, I'll do it. I will take it for him. You can't tell me that God allowed his son to endure that just so that you can go through what you're going through all along with no hope. Trust God. He'll make a way. He's been making ways. Just look back over your life. It wasn't you that got you here. Come on. It was the love of God. Yeah. Yeah. While you're sitting here right now. 
not because you're wise and you have all of these letters behind your name, in front of your name, under your name, outside of your name. No, it's because of the love of God for you. It's why you're here. So just like David did, when it came time to fight Goliath, who was this uncircumcised Philistine? Because he was confident in who he belonged to. Jesus got your back. Jesus got your back. You're not fighting this thing alone. You can do it. You will do it. You will get through it. And it'll be just another testimony on your resume. Somebody is waiting for you to get through this. So you can be their ray of sunshine. So you can be their encouragement. Giving up is not an option. Failing is not an option. It's not an option. What if? What if? After they beat Jesus, he decided, uh uh, I can't do this. What if he decided after the beat not to go to the cross? But his why, his why was greater than what he was enduring at that time. He knew that we was gonna need him. He knew you was gonna be sitting right where you are right now, enduring what you were doing right now. And he knew if he didn't go to the cross, didn't complete his task, you wouldn't have the strength to get through what you're going through right now. So you will get through it. Yes. Your healing is coming. Your deliverance is coming. Trust God. Trust God. He knows. He knows. Remember your past victories. And let your past victories be what compels you through this storm because they don't last always they last just as long as God wants them to and would you understand that you won't go through this a minute longer than God wants you to I'm confident in that that's something that I, I learned when I was <laughs> 6 to 30 years in the penitentiary I, I knew one day that they could not hold me a minute longer than God wanted them to Because I was ready to cop out for four years. But that verse that said to acknowledge God, and I went and I acknowledged God. God, what do you want me to do? He said, no. Went back to my lawyer, he said, no. Came for two years. What do you want? He said, no. Went back to my lawyer, he said, no. My lawyer looked at me and said, look, Charles. <laughs> and a lot of people came in here talking about Jesus. <laughs> But I don't think this deal is going to get no better than this. I said, he said, no. They came with one year. God said, no. He said, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, Mr. Larry. Done my part. I had court maybe two weeks later. The judge said, time served. Uh -oh. <laughs> I wanted to take four years. I wanted to take four years. I feel like me being away off of the streets for two years would have been good for my life. So I wanted to take the years. But God said no. And ever since then, I've been acknowledging God in all of my ways. God, do you want me to fight this battle?
I know. If you allow it to happen, you allow it to happen for a reason. And I trust you. But give me the strength that I need to get through it. And he will. I'm living proof. I should be dead right now. I should be spending the rest of my life in a penitentiary somewhere. But God. Come on, come on. But God. I can't tell you guys enough to trust God. Trust God. Put it in his hand and trust him. Amen. for that word. Um, Pess and I went to church yesterday in Streamwood and uh, the preacher spoke a very similar word. He said to trust God. Um, it came from James 1 where it said he is the father of all lights and in him there is no shadow of turn. There's no, he doesn't cast these shifting shadows. He's right there. So we trust him, we believe him. We all have something, like I said earlier, every one of us. But today, we choose to be still and know that he's God. Today, we just a little bit more turned it over to him. Now, let me encourage you in this. I know when we walk out of that door, life is still going to be there. Circumstances are still going to be there. My mother is still going to walk out with this oxygen. That doesn't mean God hasn't done it. That doesn't mean now my faith is questioned. It just means I hold on that much more. So we're standing and we are believing God for amazing things to happen for the people of God, for the people of this house. Um, my father and I talk a lot about you and how blessed we are to have a faithful group of people who stand with God and who stand with this ministry. Um, so let's pray and be ready to go. Can we all stand to our feet? Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that once again you have shown yourself strong. You've shown up. You've given us what we need in this time. We don't take it for granted. We don't take it lightly. In fact, Father, we'll be like that one leprous man who you healed. You healed ten, but only one came back and said thank you. So we'll be like that one who returns and says thank you. And in return, you told him, I've made you whole. The rest were healed, but you made the one whole. So, Father, in our thanksgiving, you make us whole. In our gratitude, you continue to work in us. And so we give you praise, glory, and honor for it. In Jesus' name, everybody shout amen. 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 Hug your neighbor and let them know that you love them.